Welcome to our fifth week of our um, streams in March. Going to have a little bit of a slow one uh, tonight, not too much on. Now I'm hoping all you guys can hear me. I've got a new mic today, so I'm hoping um, you guys can hear. If you guys can let me know, that'd be perfect. Okay, no one's seeing me again? No, you're there. I am there? Okay. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yeah, or see me? Quite. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, there we go. Hey, Jane. Hey, Bonnie. And Shirley, how are you? You can hear loud and clear? Okay, great. Excellent. All right. As I said, it's a new mic, so my volume is turned down. Your volume's turned down. Yeah, yeah that always helps, doesn't it? Hey, everyone. All right. I was beginning to think I was talking to myself there for a while. A new mic. What happened to the old Chris? Daryl. <laughs> Wore him out, Daryl. Had to get a new one. <laughs> well, good to see you all. Happy Easter to you too, Bonnie. Hey, Anna. Hey, Dana. Good to see you, love. All right. So, as you guys know, it's um, our fifth week. So, I'm just going to show a couple of ideas what to do with the glass beads that were this month's loot items. So, a lot of you might have already know how to do all of this, but, you know, for those that have never done it before, hopefully you'll get something out of it. What's up, Shirley? I'm not good at guessing. Just tell me. Oh, for God's sake. I'm already feeling nauseous enough, thanks, Shirley. I don't need you that picture in my head. <laughs> in fact, I put a bag of eggs back today purely because they had Turkish delight in them. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to do a short session tonight, guys. Um, not feeling the best so I'm going to hit this and uh, tuck myself in tonight. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start now with these demonstrations and um, we've got a couple of things to cover when we're finished. So I'm just going to swap this over to the next camera. Okay all right so you guys have seen a couple of the examples that I put up through the week. One of them being uh, this little flower and um, earrings. I've got a matching bracelet for the earrings. So these are just some ideas for you to do. This is just a uh, Byzantine or a half Byzantine. You could always hang beads off this. You could continue the Byzantine. You could add a couple of different um, bead sizes to capture in here. All of that sort of thing. Uh, you can also capture it in some round mail. Again, just a small piece here to show you guys uh, some ideas. This one that I was playing with has a little bit more of a Byzantine look to it. I didn't do a particularly long piece of this one. But, you know, you can do little pieces of this, um, attach it to a chain on either side. And it becomes the focal point of a necklace. You could do the same as a bracelet. It doesn't have to be all the way around. They're just some ideas for you to do. I mean, you can also use them as you would a standard bead, obviously, um, in, say, a Romanov weave. They would look lovely in that as well. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to show, for anybody that hasn't captured uh, beads in this manner, like this, I'm going to do just a quick uh, example of that as a chain and then uh, I'll show you guys how to do the flower. Alright, so to start with, oh, I'm just here, I'm not used to this mic sitting beside me. Alright, now what I found with these beads, uh, either 6mm in the check glass, I would normally use an 18 gauge 1.0 diameter wire with um, a 6mm ID. 
but I found with these beads that that was actually too tight and I took it up to a 6.25 millimeter ID so uh, you will have to have a little bit of a play perhaps with the beads um, and see how they go like anything nothing's consistent all right so just to start this I'm just going to pop these ones are actually uh, about 3.5 millimeter it doesn't really matter too much what this size is the kits that we sell with the check glass actually use a four millimeter ring there but as I said it's it's not a big deal so I'm just going to pop two of our large rings through them now and then just to give myself something to hang on to I'm going to thread the twist tie through okay so what we want to do now is add another pair of large rings through those ones just there this is 18 gauge AWG Natalie 1.0 millimeter um, diameter wire this is my preference to use with the six millimeter beads because um, you get to see more of the bead you can use a thicker gauge by all means but um, it will cover up more of the bead and you will have to adjust your um, ID size all right so once you've got two pairs of your big ring which in this case is the 6.25 millimeter ID we want to make sort of a little cage so we flop the last pair back oh, I haven't closed that very well just close that one up a bit better I'm doing this without my magnifier so you'll have to excuse my dodgy closures all right so we want to make a little bit of a cage that we want to pop our bead into and grabbing a little bead we just want to pop it into that cage just like that and then you can go a couple of different ways for the next step you can put a little two pairs of, or a pair of the smaller ring in here and make it segmented or you can make it just one long bit by by putting um, two large rings in there I like the look of it being broken up so I'm going to pop a, a couple of small rings in oops really knocked the mic flying okay so that locks that all in place and then we grab another one of our large rings and we put that through the small rings so that's basically it that's the capturing of the beads it's a really simple capture it's not hard to understand it can be a little fiddly keeping those beads in place before you lock them in did you say six millimeter ID Dawn is that what you bought hey Brett good to see you mate okay so your two pairs of your large rings and this is why when we suggest beads for captured beads we always give you guys check glass because check glass beads are more consistent we found them to be more consistent um, as I said I tried six mils with these and it just didn't work so I went up a size now you can see here that I've popped the bead in but it's not quite closing up because you can see that this ring here is not positioned properly just jiggle everything around until you've got those two rings sitting either side of your joining rings there if you've got them tucked in there in any way you're not going to be able to close it up all right so we've popped our bead in and holding it in there we then grab a couple of our smaller beads uh, rings sorry feed it through and lock it into place
did you try the six millimeter dawn and they didn't work or because they're not consistent it could be i don't know if you've got the exact same pack that i'm using here but um you know if you've got a different pack they could work perfectly well that's the problem with uh, beads they're not always consistent which is why as i said we ch choose to use check glass for these bracelets because they tend to be consistent all right so that's just the basic concept there of capturing the beads and i don't know if you guys can tell but you can see that this yellow bead that i've put in here it seems to be a little tighter than the orange amber one that i used before so this is an issue with uh, with beads okay so i'll show you guys how to do the flower we'll get onto that yeah dawn my suggestion is to just give it a go it may be perfectly fine with the set you got um or there may be colors in that set that work really well with the six but um on others that don't i think that these orange ones that i've got in here first i think they would could possibly work with the six whereas this yellow one you can see here how much little little space i've got see how closer it is to the top of the ring than the orange one is it's obviously a much bigger bead so um if you're using glass beads then this this is something that can happen so you need to you need to keep an eye on it and adjust for it basically okay all right so i've already started doing the flower so basically what the flower is is just little segments joined together so get yourself a pair of the large rings close them up and then we just want to attach a little segment to our pair of our large rings now using this larger size, I'm fitting about seven segments in with these colored beads. Again, all of that could vary. So the beauty of chainmail is um, to understand that anything can happen. So all you need to do is feed your first big ring through the center rings. So it's exactly the same. Oops, I've gone off camera, sorry guys exactly the same concept put your first two through the center so you've got those two in there then we're going to hang another pair of beads I'm sorry another pair of rings off them Okay, and we do the exact same thing. We form that little cage. We grab one of our beads. So you can see the little cage that's formed there. We pop our bead in, close it up. Now the rings I used here are 18 gauge 2.75. That's my small ones. Um, I find it helps make it nice and tight i did try the 3.5s that i was using earlier to make um you know these bracelets up and it was too loose i didn't like it so i went down to a 2.75 and made it nice and close so you do that all the way around until you fill it all up and then what we want to do as i've done here take one ring from each petal and join that up so with the 2.75 again it's nice and tight if you had a slightly bigger ring if you're having trouble with it maybe go up to a three but um, I found the 2.75 worked really well and you just close it up so you do that all the way around your flower <sighs> 
A lot of people will tell you, Margaret, that you need to have a ring that is a couple of millimetres bigger than your bead. But I haven't found that to be the case. I actually find that to be a little bit too much space. So with um, a six millimetre bead, I normally use eight engage six millimetre ID. Um, so for me, it's it is there is a little bit of trial and error. I don't really know that there's an exact answer for you. A lot of people will tell you you have to have eight millimetres in a six millimetre bead doesn't work at all for me I don't like it um, so when my six millimeter didn't work I just went up to the next size the middle ring Shirley is exactly the same it's the 6.25 millimeter I tried to use um, as few rings as possible in each one that I did yeah see and and that's what I'm I'm sort of saying there, Dawn. Um, I've never found that I needed to add that much to it because these these aren't eight millimeter eight millimeter beads, which is what they would be if we went with. I mean, eight millimeter rings. Just I'm having trouble tonight, aren't I? As with everything, do whatever works best for you. Yeah, the other thing, Silver, exactly right, to make sure that they don't fall out, run a beading wire through them. Crimp it on each end of your you know, where your clasp uh, bracelet finishes and the clasp starts. And that way you'll make sure that your beads don't accidentally pop out. What are you handing me that for? Jane, that's the question. What was Jane's question? Oh, what size the finished flower? Oops. Let me just finish putting this one together. Now you could go around and double these small rings. I did with the blue one. Um, helps tighten it up even more. It is nice and tight. I'm not going to sh uh, do it with this one here. But you can see I've done two rings there. I did have to go back and do that very slowly and very fiddly. But that's your bracelet there. Now because these are seven petals, they don't really join evenly. If there were six they might join a little bit better. You may, um, if you wanted to make a, a bracelet out of them, perhaps join them in a zigzaggy pattern or you could have just the one point of join. Or if you use a combination of, of rings that make it only a six petal, then you'd be able to join the two across and they would go across the whole way evenly. Now, oops, sorry, it's smacking. Okay, so the flowers from small ring to small ring, let me see. You're looking at about three centimeters across for the flowers or for those that work in inches smidgen over an inch an inch and a bit I don't know what that bit would be because I don't measure bits in inches <laughs> but there you go you might have, if you work in inches, you might understand what that bit is. How many, how, many how many bits are there? I'd have to sit there and count. So it was one, two, three, four. So one and one eighth of an inch. Oh, okay. So that's it. I hope you guys um, could understand that. As I said, it's just make a pair of rings in the middle, add one single, add a single uh, capture all the way around till you've filled up your space and then join your captures together using one or two rings, whichever floats your boat. One and a quarter inch. It was a little bit more than an eighth of that. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, it depends where you measure to. Yeah. Because I can't measure from point to point because there's um, 
there's not a point straight across from each other. Plus or minus an eighth of an inch. Yeah. It's a smidgen over an inch. <laughs> no, we're not off daylight savings until 3 o'clock in the morning, which will then instantly become 2 o'clock in the morning. And then, um, so, yeah, we're still in daylight savings time at the moment. But there you go. That would make a really lovely pendant. It's a bit big for earrings, unless that's your thing. That's your jam. Uh, join them together for bracelets. You could probably use pretty much any weave in the middle of these that you wanted to. Byzantine lends itself really well, I think, to this weave. You could go Persian sections in the middle. I really like the look of the Byzantine in the middle, especially when you match it up with a snazzy pair of earrings. So that's, again, the round mail. I found that to be particularly um, fiddly. I didn't get as much enjoyment out of making that one. But there's a thought for you. It's also a little chunky. It's not my thing, but it might be yours. This one I just played with. Um, sort of got a Byzantine flavour to it. More of a Byzantine flavour with a little, little hat here on top. That one I just made it up as I went along. Alright, so I hope that was useful to you guys. That will give you something to think about doing. I'm sorry I didn't get more done. Um, we've been a little tied up with getting uh, the sale and things done. So, round mail was therapeutic. Oh, maybe. I, it was the bigger rings I didn't like, um, Wes, that went around the, the beads. Maybe if I'd done, I'd chosen a different bead size, a uh, ring size. But I was hoping to use uh, the rings that I'd already used. I didn't want to complicate it by adding more more and more ring sizes to it. Okay, um, so yeah, just a couple of things before we finish up. So as I said, daylight saving is finishing um, at three o'clock in the morning for us. So next week uh, we're going to be um, an hour, goes back an hour. So for those that aren't um, in New South Wales and Victoria and anywhere else that does daylight savings. Remember that. Marvin the Martian. Yeah. This one here, is this what you're talking about? Oh, this one here. Sorry, wrong camera. Forget it. I'm out of it. I didn't like crap today. Um, what else was there? Oh, Mail Club kicks off again next month. Sign-ups for those that are interested. Tomorrow. What did I say? No, I'm just saying next month oh, is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Kicks off tomorrow. So those that are waiting for that to open up again, that happens tomorrow. The sale is still on. So thank you to everyone who's made a purchase so far. Thank you very much. Um, that will still be running for a couple of days. Back to your 3 a.m. Is that better than 4 a.m., Lisa? <laughs> Sounds worse. <laughs> um, what else was there? Yeah, that was it. And um, of course, the quilt is going ahead. Um, just to keep updated with that and, and everything, just do that through Aussie Mailers, which we've been doing. So, big shout out um, to Wes, um, to what to Wes? Sorry, Wes, not to you. Big shout out to you, but not for this one. To Daryl and Cassandra for their help mm -hmm. with everybody Absolutely. with their images. Really, really appreciate that. Um, Chris and I have been a little flat out, so we hadn't been able to be as much help as we'd hoped we would be. So Cassandra and, and um, Daryl, and I've been practising your name all week, Daryl. <laughs> and then I blew it today. I called you Stephen in a conversation I had with Chris today. But anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, they really picked up the baton and ran with it, so we really do appreciate that, guys. Um, so is there anything else that anyone wants covered while I'm here? So you go back to sleep at three after three o'clock, Lisa. Mm, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, Daryl and Cassandra have been lifesavers this week. All right. Well, I might, sorry to love you and leave you guys, but I might leave it at that then if everybody is okay. Um, 
Did you like the camera angle? We've been fiddling with the camera today. So I hope that that camera angle was good. Did it look good, babe? Yeah, I thought so. Okay. I'm happy with it. You're happy with it? Yeah, we've been fiddling with the camera and settings and hopefully that one was a little bit clearer for everybody. All right, sweethearts. Well, I am going to go then. I'm going to go tuck myself into bed, I think. Everyone enjoy uh, the rest of their Easter break, especially Sunday with all the chuckies. Mm. I will not be eating any Turkish Delight eggs. In fact, as I said, I've we put the packet back. There's no Turkish Delight eggs in this house at all. <laughs> <laughs> the sound is great as well, Lisa. Yeah, we had uh, some feedback that the pre-recorded videos were a bit soft, so we went out and just snagged a little bit of a Upgrade. Upgrade. I feel a bit weird because it sits beside me because I can't have it sitting in front of me. Um, yeah, I'll get used to it. <laughs> All right, guys, take care, and I will see you back here next week uh, with a new weave from our April kit. All right, take care. Bye.